new here tonight, you send text messages to chat to make appointments and in some cases to strike a deal. Yeah, but can a text be a legally binding contract? It's why one business owner called Help Me Howard with Patrick Frazier. In real estate, they like to joke, the three keys are location, location, location. Knowing a small business, it's no joke. The three keys are work, work, and more hard work. It's a mom and pop landscaping and paving company. Uh, we've been in business for about three years. Jill and her husband own JJ Landscaping, doing landscaping, of course, and also driveways. Our work is guaranteed. We have a plethora of references and recommendations. Recently, a woman they do yard work for asked them to take care of her father's driveway. The job was to pretty much go in and correct her parents' driveway that was ruined or stained by the previous paving company they had hired. Jill and the daughter exchanged many text messages over a few days to apply stripper to the driveway. The daughter wrote it also needed sealing and repairs. Jill went to look at the driveway, where she says the father decided he didn't want the driveway sealed. He says, no, there's no reason to have it resealed. I just want to get these stains up and pressure wash it. Jill then sent a text to the daughter that said they would apply the stripper and pressure wash for $1,200. There was no mention of sealing the driveway. A crew was then sent to do the work. We get there. The guys start. We didn't request the deposit. We trusted them. That would be a mistake. From the air, you can see Jill's crew did the job. She then asked for her $1,200. And the daughter says that the sealer wasn't applied. Jill replied in a text, your dad did not want the driveway resealed. And she told the daughter, the $1,200 price didn't include sealant anyway. But the father and his daughter still refused to pay. I honestly don't know how somebody can do that to such an honest company and still have a good night's sleep. Well, Howard, there's no written agreement, just a lot of texts back and forth. Legally, do texts make a binding contract? Jill definitely gets paid for the work. The question is, how much? And by that I mean, in their texts back and forth, they talk about sealing the driveway. But the final text from Jill with the quote never mentions the sealant. She also says the father did not want the driveway sealed, but the daughter says she did in prior texts. So if a judge had to go through those texts to make a ruling, they could reduce the amount owed or give Jill the entire $1,200. We talked to the father and the daughter, both hung up on us. Then later the daughter called us and said it wasn't about the sealant. She didn't like the quality of the job. She then offered to pay a portion of the $1,200, but never did that and once again is not answering our calls or texts. I think this is obvious. Don't do back and forth texting to create a contract. You want to put everything the job includes in one place, one piece of paper, one email, and both sides clearly agree to it. That lessens the chances of disputes, confusion, and lawsuits. Inside the gated community where the father lives, $1,200 may not be a big deal, but that money is for Jill. $1,200 is a lot of money for us. It is. We're not this huge, huge corporation out there. Bottom line, while it's best to finalize a deal in writing, some people are going to do it in texts. And if you're going to use text as the contract, put all the details in one text and make sure the other person texts back, I agree to that. Otherwise, it could turn into a mess. And we'll keep an eye on this and let you know if the father and daughter listen to Howard and pay Jill. Don't like the way the landscape around you is looking? Want that mess to be stripped away from you? Drive it our way, and hopefully we can pave the way for you to seal the deal. Well, this helped me, Howard and Patrick Frazier, 7 News.